remember that great place you stayed in years ago which comes to mind each time you think of a good hotel experience? Well, behind every such outing are an army of people looking to give you the perfect homely atmosphere and ambience. Today, hotel management is an industry that attracts thousands every year, keeping it all together and liaising with different departments all to ensure the hotel puts its best foot forward is the general manager. He is responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the hotel and its staff, overseeing budgeting, food and beverage options, and housekeeping, to name a few. The general manager of a hotel is supposed to look after all the departments in the hotel. So the, day, the way we begin the day is we have a morning meeting at 9.30 in the morning, which is attended by all the respective heads of departments. So the housekeeper, the f and &E manager, chef, engineer, chief engineer, uh, IT manager, HR, accounts head, sales manager, training manager, it, the list doesn't stop. Yeah, but we try and make sure we take grasp of what happened the previous day in terms of what we could have done better to make sure we looked after more guests. And there's plenty of exercise involved. One of the daily routines of the general manager is to walk the length and breadth of the hotel, checking in with the different departments throughout the day. The front office is the first department a guest interacts with when they enter the hotel. It is therefore important for the front office to always be on their toes, ready to greet the guests and help them plan their day better. We take out a lot of things which begin with uh, checking with front office okay. as to what the plan for the day is, how many check-ins are supposed to happen, whether we have any group arrivals. We check how many airport transfers are to be arranged for. So we have something called the daily flash report. We go across that. Um, so yesterday was a good day for us because we were sold out. Yeah. Uh, based after that, the next thing that we go on to check is the um, arrival report in terms of what expected arrivals do we have. This is a report that's always prepared by the front office manager. The front office manager also prepares uh, various reports like the check-ins and check-outs that are supposed to happen. The restaurants and the coffee shops of the hotel are headed by a food and beverage or an F&B manager. He is in charge of a team that includes restaurant managers for individual restaurants and hostesses and stewards to ensure that perfect dining experience. The housekeeping team of a hotel is responsible to add the wow factor in a hotel. We all like our rooms to have freshly laundered linen, fluffy pillows, and this is where housekeeping comes in. We're now entering the main kitchen. So kitchens are broken down in terms of there's an executive chef, mm -hmm. which is then followed by a sous chef. Okay. who's responsible for their own respective kitchen as the executive chef handles the operations of the entire hotel. Okay. Underneath the sous chef you have your CDPs who are chef de parties mm -hmm. and then followed by all the commies. Okay. Yeah. So this is how all the kitchen things work across the world. When we're looking at someone who's, uh, when you're looking at hiring someone for the kitchen, yeah. the aspects that we look for is passion for food, mm -hmm. the, the, the knowledge which they have been carrying with them, and the ability to work under a lot of pressure because yeah. the guest always wants our food in those 15 to 20 minutes time yeah. and no matter how busy or quiet the restaurant is, the food has to be served in those 20 minutes. With the Indian hospitality sector growing at 14% every year, according to India Brand Equity Foundation, it's boom time for the industry. Making sure the Indian experience is incredible isn't always easy, but for those involved, it can be immensely satisfying. In New Delhi with Stephen Anthony, Hriti Mathur for NDTV. Right, so if you believe that that uh, is your cup of tea, how do you go about it? Mahesh Pradi with us in the studio. Thanks very much for joining us and uh, looking to answer all those queries that we have coming our way, Mahesh. But up first, there are just uh, so many more options today than say there were 15, 20 years yeah. ago. And even in hotel management, like we were discussing earlier, there are of course all these training institutes as well as you know India's top uh, hotel chains and their own institutes so is there how, how does one really compare 
with the other or is it even fair to compare them? It's not necessary for, uh, for you to compare actually. There are quite a few good institutions that have opened up over the past many years. Some because there was a supply constraint so the companies got themselves into the training of uh, a good manpower. Mm -hmm. And some have come of recently Ecole has come up at Lavasa mm -hmm. which is a fantastic uh, hospitality uh, institute across the world. Mm -hmm. And same is the case with the IHM uh, series that the uh, tourism ministry has started. Mm -hmm. Then you have this welcome group, the Taj, right. the, the Sheraton and all these Oberoi's and all people having their own institute. Hmm. Now each of them hmm. will also ensure that the students are placed beyond right. their own companies, yes. mind yes. you, because it's important for them to be accepted right. as a as right. a as a uh, you know currency, and that's which is right. the case. absolutely. Right. So what the the companies uh, institutes do is to ensure that you at least have a fallback option. Right. But having said that, IHM, Eko Lavasa and all place most of the students. No, right. no big deal about it. So don't worry about where you're doing it. Right. As long as you know that you're doing it in the right institute, right. which understands what hospitality is about. Right. The important thing here, Natasha, is to ensure that you join an institute where the core of it is hospitality, which means that you know typically you talk about it as a customer versus a guest. Hmm. You know you don't get into a hotel where you're treated as a customer. You, right. So you, the aptitude is very important of whether you can have a smile despite the tiredness right. that you have and and all those things. Right. I'm so sure you and media you go through that whole thing. Right? Personality fit. Absolutely. So as <laughs> really long as you understand know. that you need to right. go through that grind, right. the where you study in any of these good institutions right. is just a matter of uh, you know. Uh, it, choice that you make at that point in time. Right. Don't worry about that. But first understand your aptitude, whether you are guest are friendly, you really whether you can carry a smile right. on your face, come what may. Are you cut out for it or Absolutely. not? That, that's of course and that can be a tall order for many. I, I would yeah. imagine that. So keep all that in mind also. It might look very glamorous on the outside, but let me assure you everything that looks very glamorous <laughs> on the outside can be a lot of hard work, blood, sweat and tears yeah. Yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. Well, let's get started right away. Uh, Ishisha has a question. Why the salary is too less in the industry? The work is too much, we work really hard but still we are not paid for what we really work. Too much work and, and the remuneration not... Uh, I think uh, that's, uh, you know, you go to any profession you will have that complaint. First three years you say I'm getting a stipend but I need to learn and mm. I'm still a student because I'm learning during the process. Many things fall in place in your head right. and you start learning and you start enjoying it. Well, Prashant also has a question. Go ahead, Prashant. A lot of the officials at high positions are from foreign countries. So why is that? Why is there less belief in, in, in your own manpower, in, in the manpower of your own country, in, in your own abilities? Most hospitality chains are global chains, but right. for the Oberoi's right. uh, or the Trident or, mm. or the Taj. And even the Taj and the Oberoi's have people all over the world because mm. they have hotels all over the world. Mm. They'll keep moving people. Mm. Just because you see a few foreigners sitting in your hotel where mm. you're staying, it doesn't mean that Indians are not working elsewhere. The I same see. thing also happens. Okay. Okay. And two, on the culinary side, the chef side, you know, you want to eat Italian from an Italian chef possibly. Mm. If, mm. And, and that's that's the speciality of the whole right. thing. You don't you want to go to Ming's kitchen or you yeah. prefer Ming's for a Chinese thing. Right. So it's important for us to understand that right. in a globalized environment, these right. things are bound to happen and don't think that because you're seeing a few foreigners where it you're going staying and eating or right. whatever it is doesn't mean that it's, it's the end of it because there are a lot of people who start, you, you go abroad and you'll see a lot of Indians who are working there and they'll take care of you so it's right. it's just a game of glo globalization and we are just a part of it right well, uh, another question coming from Astik. I have very less options uh, to pursue my um, further studies in India. So could you please suggest me where should I study uh, to, uh, to develop more advanced culinary skills uh, in India and uh, as well as in abroad? Quite a few culinary uh, mm. schools, in, but I would still suggest that you know go back to the basics of going mm. to the welcome group or the Taj and all because I they see. actually have different schools within that, mm. and they will ensure that you are slotted uh, uh, wherever you are. It's mm. it's important that you have the interest, obviously, which is culinary skills. Mm. But once you do that, I think these hotels mm. will be able to slot you better right. uh, of where you want to be. And having said that, there are quite a few culinary schools in the country. Do your research mm. if you want. Come come and talk to us at careers360.com, and we will right. be able to guide you. But there are quite a few good schools in the country. At this point. Right, so that's of course another place where you can get that help from. Ronaja also has a question. Go ahead, Ronaja. What are the things that needs to be done to get into the travel sector or to get a job which is cooking and traveling? Both, which includes both. This entire thing of tourism mm. versus hospitality versus culinary. Mm. Uh, Tourism is slightly different from the other two. The other two are hospitality, this is tourism. And both okay. 